I'm Ken. I'm a librarian here at the Hinton Municipal Library. Today I'd like to help you get started with OverDrive on your computer. The first thing you're going to need to do is open up your browser. That could be Google Chrome, Microsoft Edge, Internet Explorer, whatever you regularly use. I'm going to use Firefox. Once your browser is open, go to hintonlibrary.org. From here, we'll go to e-resources. And in this search bar, type in OverDrive. And enter. Scroll down to OverDrive and click the title. Scroll down a little bit more and click on this button for OverDrive. Once on OverDrive, the first thing we'll want to do is sign in, using the button over here to the right. On this page, you'll be prompted to enter in your library barcode, found on your library card, and enter in your library PIN. Your PIN number should be the last four digits of your phone number that you gave to the library when you registered. Once you have entered in your barcode and PIN, click Sign In. I'm going to jump ahead to the next page just because I don't want to share my barcode with the whole internet. Right after signing in, you should be brought back to the front page. You can see that you're signed in because of, instead of seeing sign in, it'll say my account. From my account, you can see what items you currently have out, your holds, wish list, things like that. Let's go through it right now. You can see I have one title out right now, and more titles, nine more titles can be borrowed. On holds, you can see that I don't have anything on hold at the moment, but if I did, they would appear here. I can have 10 holds at a time at the moment. Again, you have a wish list if there's things that you're hoping to get at a later date. You can rate titles. You can make recommendations to the library. You can see the history of what you've downloaded. Or you can go to your settings. Things like set in a default lending period, so 14 days for ebooks and audiobooks. But this can be changed when you check out an item. You can see whether or not your history is displayed and what sort of content you want to see. You can also change the contrast of the website or the font on the website. Now let's click on the track button on the top left of the page to get back to the front page. Scrolling down the front page we can see different promotions and collections of materials. These will change periodically. From the covers of the works, we can get a bit of information from them. We can see whether it's available, whether it's an ebook or audiobook. We can see if it's on a wait list, and we'll have to place a hold on it in them. The front page is good for seeing what's new, what's topical, or just getting some ideas. However, we can also take a look at subjects for, for materials. That's up here by clicking subjects. We can see different fiction subjects, juvenile literature, science fiction, mystery, essays, and in nonfiction, architecture, business, management, all sorts of different subjects here. Same with juvenile fiction and juvenile nonfiction, as well as young adult fiction and young adult nonfiction. We can also check out different collections. If you go to collections here, you can see what's available now, new ebook editions, new kid editions, most popular titles. Same with audiobooks. We can also see things for kids. This will take us to a separate kids collection that only has kids materials. It will function similar to the main collection, but for now, let's go back to the main collection. Let's go ahead and check out an ebook. I'm going to do a search by clicking on the magnifying glass and the search text. A new bar has opened up below it, and I can type in what I'm looking for. It'll have some predictive text trying to get guesses of what you're going to be looking for. And since I was looking for Margaret Atwood, let's just click on that. Here again we can see there's some things on waitlist and some things that are immediately available. Both in ebook and eventually we'll see some audiobooks here too. So let's select an ebook. 
let's go for this one. If I click on the cover page, it'll bring me to this page with a little bit more information. I can read a sample, same way I could listen to a sample of an audiobook. For now, I'm going to click Borrow. I'm going to change the number of days here. By default, again, it was at 14, but I only need it for 7. From here, it'll give me the option to download an EPUB ebook or read now in the browser. First, let's take a look at what it looks like in the browser. So it'll start off with the cover. To move forward, click on the right side of the screen. Just like with a physical book, we're going to start with a cover and some introductory pages. When we get to the contents page, we have the option to skip to different points in the book. We can go back to the title page, here to the table of contents, or different parts in the book. For this presentation, I'm going to continue to the book without clicking on any of the blue links. If we ever need to go backwards, we can click on the left side of the screen. Like clicking on the top middle of the screen, we bring up a menu. Here we can see how far through the book we are. We're on pages 11 to 12 of 56, which we can scroll through really quickly if we want to. We can also change how the text is formatted on the page. Here it'll be centered. So if we go out of the menu, it's not page in page, but all justified. We can still click on the left and the right to go through the book. Bringing up the menu again, we can do a search inside the book for different words or phrases. We can also bookmark pages with this little bookmark image. And by bringing up the menu, we can again do searches, we can find the table of contents again and jump throughout. Or we can take a look at our bookmarks, jump back between them. We can also change the reading settings. That's the size of the text. Accessibility sizes. We can change the lighting. We can even change the font. We can get offline access by downloading to the, to the browser. And we have various tips and secrets that OverDrive will help us with. See, even there's different ways to go between pages, whatever works most comfortable for you. That's the basics for reading the book in your browser, but you may want to view it in another program. Let's close this tab and look at the options download. When we download an EPUB ebook, we have to use a different application. We have two choices and we'll go through the both of them. But first, let's go back to our account on the loans page. From here we can see that the book expires in seven days. That's when it will be automatically returned. So click on this and click on whichever application you prefer. Let's go through OverDrive app first. Go to English Canada, and then it's a free program, and we're going to get that. It'll open up the Microsoft Store where we can install it. I'm going to jump ahead because the loading screen might take a minute. Once it's loaded, we can click Get. And we won't, don't need to sign in at this time. And now it's downloading, and again I'm going to skip ahead as you don't need to watch that. Now that the program is installed, we can go ahead and launch it. Again, that took a couple seconds, so I did cut ahead. Um, so what we're going to need to do is sign up. So we're going to sign up using our library card. 
You're going to have to enter in the library's name, that's Hinton Municipal Library, and press go. And it's 803 Switzer Drive, Hinton, Alberta. That's right. Once again, we're going to have to enter in our barcode and our PIN. I'm going to jump ahead after I click sign in, as I did before. And I've just pressed signed in, and it's loading. It might not have synced up your account right away, so it might not show the things that you've downloaded. But if you go to the Track Consortium, and sign in again, Once again, with your barcode and PIN, you can go to your account and loans, and here's the books that I have out. So now I'm going to download the EPUB ebook of the book that I just got. And I'd like to go to my bookshelf to actually view the book. So now the book is on my bookshelf. So I can open it up by clicking it on the bookshelf. And once again, we can see contents, front cover, title page, different pages in the book. We can set bookmarks. I'll keep one on the cover page. And once again, we can go forward and back by clicking again in the top middle. We bring up these pages. We can check out our bookmarks. You can see that I have one for the front cover, and it'll load to the front cover. We might need to maximize the screen to see all of the buttons. So once again, we can scroll through the book. You can even jump ahead to the next or previous chapter. Go to where we previously were, change the settings on the font size, color scheme, and layout, columns, and page animations. When we're done, what we can do is open up the menu and click the back button, and now we're back to our bookshelf. And if we right click on a book, we can see a couple things. We can open it, we can see larger covers, we can add a different title, we can delete and return the item, or we can read it or pin it here if we're going to be reading it for a while. Right now, I'm going to actually return this item. I can delete but not return it if I want to use it on a different device or with a different program, but for right now, I'm going to delete and return it. So now it has gone from my bookshelf. Now I'll close Overdrive, and if I refresh this page, now the other book is gone. So now we're going to get Adobe Digital Editions to try this other book. So we're going to select Download, and we're going to save the file instead of opening it with Overdrive. Now we're going to need to get Adobe Digital Editions. So if you open up a search, or if you had that prompt earlier, and go and type in Adobe, and you can find Adobe. If you type in Adobe Digital Editions and download, this site should come up. So we have the option to download on the App Store, Google Play, but in this case, since I'm on Windows, I'll download the Windows version. And save the installer. Now here, I will open the installer and select yes, I want to make changes on my device. We don't have time to read the license agreement at the moment, so I'm just going to continue on. And if you want this to be your primary device, you'll probably want to associate the files and wherever you normally make shortcuts. 
and this looks like a good place to install it to me. And it'll just take a minute to load, which again I will skip. When it's finished installing, just close this box, and in a couple seconds Adobe should open up on its own. You can see it's already started down here. Oh, it's good to go. So now if we go and check out the book that we downloaded, we can drag it into Adobe Digital Editions. You might have to authorize your computer. To do that, go to Help and Authorize Computer. Um, there it'll ask you if you have an Adobe ID. If you do, you can enter that in. You can also sign up if you don't have one. That's to let you use the, device, the books on multiple devices. If you're only going to be using one device, there is a prompt to just authorize this computer in the bottom left with a checkbox. Once the book is open, we can click on the arrows to move back and forth. In this case, once again, the contents page, you can jump back to other places or forward. We can change the text size, the font size up here. We can set bookmarks. We can find the table of contents and jump around. We can go back to our library, and it'll even say when it's going to be due back. We have different options for things that you haven't read yet, things that are borrowed, things that are purchased, recently read, or recently added. Going back into the book, we can see that it kept where we left off. And once again, when we're done reading a book, we can right-click on it, and return borrowed item. And yes, we do want to return it. Now, if we go back to our loans, again, refresh the page, you can see we don't have any titles checked out anymore. When you're done with an item that you're borrowed, be sure to return it in the application that you use or on your loans page. Returning materials means that somebody else with a hold will get the item sooner. Finally, when you're done, you might want to sign out of your account. To do that, click My Account and Sign Out. Now, we created this video in March of 2020. It's possible that Overdrive has made some changes to their service when you try to get your ebooks or audiobooks. If something trips you up or if you have any other questions, please don't hesitate to contact the library. You can also consult Overdrive's help guide by clicking on Help up in the top right. The help guide has a comprehensive list of walkthroughs for all of the devices that you may want to use, and OverDrive keeps them up to date with all of the changes. So for example, if we do Getting Started, we can see all these different devices, even including Libby, their app for mobile devices and computers. If you found this video useful, have any questions, or an idea for another video, please let us know. Thank you for watching and thank you for supporting your local library.